All right, cool. So then we're going to talk about um, the artifacts in the deck. There are 30. First one, pretty self-explanatory, a Chromos Memorial. Yeah, creatures you can still have flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, and haste, um, and pro, what is it, black, black and red, red, which is really great. Yeah. Um, people can't force you to sacrifice creatures. Well, uh, directly target sacrifice. Yeah. Or murder's cut, or doom blade, or any really nice kill spells. Uh, it's fantastic. It's just like really, really good. <laughs> this card's just really amazing. And again, the flying per flying is so yeah. relevant. Vigilance Trample Haste. It's like, I'm gonna play an Ulamog. It gets haste. Seems good. Yeah. Uh, cool. Then we have uh, Blink Moth Urn. This will help you more than it will help any other deck because it's at the beginning of each player's main phase, so it does help your opponents. Um, you get one mana into your mana pool on your pre combat main phase, so it only works on your first main phase. Um, for every single artifact you control. So this, the Dark Steel Citadel, Soul Ring, and 60% of the, more than 60% of the deck. Um, so it, it's great. It does help your opponents, but like, to be honest, you don't really care because it helps you more than anyone else. And you're like, they'll get like one mana for like a Soul Ring or something, but that's pretty much and it. And you'll get typically eight plus mana yeah. when that's out on the field. It's really good, really good. And I feel like people are a little bit more hesitant to get rid of it because it kind of helps them too and they're getting mana, but the thing is that it's colorless mana mm -hmm. and a lot of times depending on the deck, your deck can be very color sensitive. You don't care because you run no colors, but like other people are like, eh, I get colorless mana, but it's like, eh, they'd rather have colored mana. Uh, Dark Steel Forge? Um, all your artifacts are indestructible. And yeah. it is nine mana, but it's you don't, you don't care. really care. You don't um, care. People not being able to play destroy spells on your creatures is probably the best thing in existence. Yeah, it's really devastating. It really is. And that's all artifacts, so there's a card later you'll see that makes everything an artifact, which is super fun. <laughs> Seems really good. Your lands are and everything. Um, then we have Death Render. This really is a card that I'm still kind of iffy on. It's great because if the equipped creature dies, you get to put another creature control in the battlefield with Death Render equipped to it, so... Somebody kills your little 2-2, two -two, you got an Ulamog in your hand, you just dropped a 10-10, which is now a 12-12 on potentially turn 4, um, if not quicker than that, which is super relevant. Um, but more often than not with the deck, because you get so much mana, you kind of dump your hand, and because it's colorless, you don't have a, access to a lot of great card draw, you can kind of, you'll sometimes just have nothing in your hand to drop with it, which is always somewhat yeah. awkward. I think it's definitely one of those cards that will potentially come out. I think Death Render is a really good card. I just don't know how I necessarily feel about it in this deck. I feel like it's a little bit too situational for me. Yes. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, cool. Then we have um, Dolom's Gate. This is a two drop, which is, I think, one of two two drops in the entire deck. Um, but it's prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to creatures you control. Um, attacking creatures. Yes. Yeah, attacking creatures. So you have no penalty for swinging out at somebody. No risk whatsoever. Yeah. It's great. Basically. I mean, I guess they could do like Aether Spouts or whatever, the blue card that's return yeah. all attacking creatures. Don't understand. But that's about all you get to worry about. Yeah. Psychonic Rift or something, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't even have to be attacking. Yeah. Uh, then we have Expedition Map. So Only colorless card I know of that lets you search for any land that's strictly any colorless. Any lands, yeah. I'm and because. Everything else typically says for a basic land, yeah. and you have no basic lands, so... Yeah. Yeah. Three mana, get any land you want out of your deck. Um, yeah, I mean, Expedition Map being used in Modern Tron, I mean, it's it's a super great card, and it's like, you know, if you do happen to have, like, two Urza lands out, you could potentially sack it and get your third Urza land, yep. which would be really awesome. Have you ever done that before? No, you said you've mm, never had it. Well, I've before. never had the Expedition Map when oh, I had okay. all three, when I had two other it could Urza happen. lands. It's possible. It could happen. I've had... Um, lower odd things happen with the deck before, yeah, so, definitely. which we'll get into later. Yeah, cool. And then we have a card that I tell Paul to take out all the time and he doesn't listen to me. Um, Fire Shrieker. Uh, quick creature is double strike. This is great. Um, anything that has double strike will trigger combat triggers twice. So I have all five swords in the deck, and having any of the swords' abilities trigger twice is the greatest thing in the world. Yeah. Um, so draw two cards, deal four damage to an opponent, um, untap all your lands twice, which is actually a lot of fun if you have a card that gives them flash, which I don't have in the deck anymore. Yeah. I should maybe put that back in. Uh, maybe yeah. not, because it's a little it's situational. situational. Yeah. I don't know. I like Fire Shaker. I, I'm not in love with it. Like, I'd rather be another creature or something, but that's just me. I mean, it also gives you... Uh, no, that doesn't even do triggers on an Eldrazi. Yeah. Um, because it's when they attack. That would be so broken. <laughs> Imagine new Ulamog. 
when it, it's whenever it deals damage. Do you know mm-hmm. that people are calling it Numamog? Yes. I think that's great. It's it's a pun. Everybody loves like, puns, I love right? It. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that one. Uh, then we have Ghost Fire Blade. Um, this is fun. One mana crit creature gets uh, one mana play. A crit creature gets plus two plus two. Equip for three. Unless you're equipping to something that's colorless, Everything then it's in the deck. one mana. Everything so in the deck. two mana creature got plus two plus two. It's it's great. It's pretty good. Uh, then um, we have Mana Vaults. This is a card people tell me I really shouldn't run. Um, but here's the thing: it's turn one. You can produce three mana, which can means you can play a lot of things on turn one. The downside to this card is you have to pay four on your untap phase or upkeep phase. I think it's untap um, phase um, yeah, to untap really it. So you're losing one mana effectively on that turn, um, or you're netting nothing on that turn if you play another land on that turn. But getting access to three mana for one is really, really good. You do take one damage if you don't untap it, so you can choose not to untap it. Um, but it's one damage, so you really don't typically care. And also, at the end of the day, it's just kind of like something nice early game. One mana, you know, which is really good. There's not a lot of earth stuff that you can do early on in the deck, so I think that's really good. Yeah, that Except quick ramp is rocks. really helpful. Yeah, I agree. Uh, then we have Mindstone. Mindstone, Mana Rock, and Sacrifice a draw, draw card. card. And that draw card is probably what I do most often with the card. Once yeah. you get past 8 mana on the field, maybe 10... Um, sack it and get a card yeah. because you're going to want that card more than. You know what card you may would maybe good option this deck is um Hedron Archive. Um, that just came out yeah, or, that's four mana. Just, no Battle for Zendikar. Yeah, Battle for Zendikar. It, that's four mana. But you get um, um to draw two cards and you get two mana. I've thought about running the set. There's three of them. There's another one that's six that does three and you get three cards. Yeah. Um, so there they are. There's a full set of them. Yeah. It, it, I'd rather keep the lower cost ones just to keep the CMC yeah. down a little bit. Cause, it's pretty good for card draw. Yeah. yeah. It could be replaced like with the Colossal Channel or something like that. Because you don't have a lot of card draw on Colossus, so, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. maybe. It's an option. Um, Next cool. is Mirror Works. This is fun. Two mana, put a copy of any artifact that you cast onto field. Or whatever an artifact non- enters the battlefield. Non-token. Non-token. Well, yeah. there are not a lot of tokens in the deck. There's a lot uh, with your lands. I can but produce tokens yeah. with my land, yeah, but you never... You use it to play it on like a Dark Steel uh, Colossus, yeah, um, really or big. any other really fun artifact creatures. There's a lot of them. Edge Champion, can you, get two of them. Can you do this multiple times? Like, uh, as far as I'm once? aware, you can only do it. You can only once. do it once. Okay, yeah, that would be because really it's dumb. when it enters, you get the trigger. If you pay two, you get a copy. Oh, it's okay. Not yeah, no, two. that makes sense. Because then you make a token of that, yeah. and that you can't... Okay, yeah. that, oh, that makes so much sense. That would be so broken if yeah. you could do that multiple times. Oh, hey, yeah. I'm going to get like 12... <laughs> Something that's really intimidating. Yes. Yeah, that. <laughs> As champions, that would be great. That would be amazing. I would love that. that would be they all trigger Metalcraft on themselves, which is yeah. even better. That's amazing. Okay. <laughs> we just invented a new magic card. That'd be the most broken thing ever. That's never going to get made. No. <laughs> we don't hate magic. No. We have um, Mycos and Vladis. A lot of people hate this card, especially with Karn, because this makes every permanent an artifact and colorless. Now, that means opponents' lands are artifacts. Karn says you can animate any artifact into a creature. Lands have zero CMC. They become zero CMC creature, or zero zero creatures, which means they die. Um, your stuff is colorless, so you don't care that anything's taps for any color or anything, so you, uh, you don't care at all. And then um, everything you have is an artifact, which is the more relevant thing, because with like Dark Steel Forge or any of the creatures that check for artifact counts and stuff like that are now either indestructible or... Um, very hard to kill because they're massive creatures. Yeah, it's definitely one of those cards that it gets a lot of hate, but you kind of do it if people are being really mean about to win or whatever. You know. Yeah, I don't typically have played both of them at the same time unless somebody's done something really yeah terrible and they have to die, and I'm like, yeah. no, you can't have fun anymore, and I go blow up all the yeah, ones. Yeah, basically, yeah. I feel like that is like appropriate, but if someone's like not doing anything and then you're just rude, like that's a different story, yeah. you know. Those are just as our EDH politics. Yeah. Like people have totally different things, and that's fine. That's just how we play the game, basically. Uh, cool. Then we have Prize Shield. This card's really sweet. This is fun. Um, and you put this on something like a stuffy dog, uh, which is indestructible. So funny. And you literally cannot take damage. You won't take commander damage. You won't take anything because all the damage is dealt to a quick creature. Only problem is that they swing with infect. Um, because it will then kill the creature that's blocking. It's pretty um, though. Yeah, you don't see yeah. a lot of Infect in EDH. Um, not, that, not that in our playgroup. Yeah, yeah at least with our playgroup. Yeah. But it's fun. They go swing with 
50 power, you go, that's great, I'm not going to block. And you yeah. take no damage, so you don't really care. Yeah, it's a sweet card. Oh, then we have one of my favorite cards, which is Perilous Vault. People, People become start. a problem, you exile their field. And your field. Yeah. Which is typically not as bad, because you will either have less things on the field than they do because they've been killing your stuff, or because they have access to more things than you do, where they're putting out a lot more tokens and stuff like that. Yeah. Even if you have to get rid of your board, I mean, let's be real here, we have all lots of board wipe when we yep. don't necessarily want to because we like our board, but we really don't like other people's boards, so we kind of like... And the advantage of this is it does exile things, so they get yeah. big scary things, they're not coming back. Yeah, um, absolutely. Unless they have torn elementals, which is just rude. That card's sweet, I love that card. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's in my task of each deck, it's yeah, so Yeah, it'll be my elemental deck too. It's I'm amazing. It eventually. I love it. Okay, cool. Then we have um, Pristine Talisman. Um, three drop, add one to your mana pool, gain one life whenever you tap it. Yeah. You don't do something, tap it at the end of the last opponent's turn, oh, hey, look, you gain a life. Yeah. Uh, it's just fun. Basically, I like it. Pixis, this card is fun. Um, everybody says it's a terrible card. It drops for one mana, seven, and you do the second ability. The first ability is everybody exiles the top card of the library face down. Um, so nobody knows what the cards are. For seven, so weird. it is a weird card, yes. For seven mana and you tap it, you sacrifice the card. All the cards that were exiled with this enter the battlefield. Um, unless it's an instant or sorcery. Because there's only one instant sorcery in the deck, which is all is dust, uh, which we'll see in a little bit, um, everything in my deck hits the field. And I have lots of big, scary creatures in Eldrazi, whereas most decks have a lot more variance in the CMC of things that I'm going to always end up ahead with this, or will 99% of the time. And so... It's just a great time. It typically gets killed before I get it off because people are like, you have seven cards exiled under that. We don't want to see those. I'm not going to comment on Pixis. We're oh. just going to move on to the next <laughs> card. <laughs> then we have a Quicksilver Amulet. This card's sweet. Four mana and then play a big Eldrazi. You don't get the cast Seems triggers, like a good day. but you don't necessarily care. Or you yeah. play a Void Winner. Oh, hey, look, doesn't have an ETB trigger. Yeah. It's just a bad time for everyone else on it's potentially great. turn five. Yeah, it's, which is if not quicker than that. It's also great because like if you really need to get ahead and like you just really need a big creature like a big Eldrazi or something, like you can just do this. Um, yeah. And it's really great too if you, for some reason, you don't have a lot of mana or you don't have mana rocks. I don't really know why, but like you just need a creature on board, you can use Quicksilver. Yeah, Island. it is a great way to get the big creatures or reduce the cost of casting a creature. Basically, yeah. Um, then we have Quiet as Spike. This is fun. This really Put this good. on anything with Death Touch, and it's just a game winning thing. Um, what has Death Touch? Well, uh, I'm sorry, anything with Trample. Trample, yeah. Because um, Death that Trample is just great in Magic to begin it's with. Like, like um, you hit somebody, they lose half their life rounded up after you've already taken the damage to them. Yeah. So, they're at 40 life, they're at the... Let's say we put on the Dark Steel Colossus, which is a 10-10 or an 11-11. 11-11. Something like that. So they lose 10 life, we'll say, so they're at 30. Now they lose another 15. And Seems good. From one swing, it's great. Um, and if you have a creature with double strike, that ability triggers twice. That's so they like lose really good. half their life twice, twice. <laughs> which is great. This is You went from 20 to 5 life. I feel like talking about this deck and then talking about my EDH decks, this is so much scarier. I mean, I, my decks still do really powerful things, but like... You, the problem with this yeah. deck is consistency, because you don't have yeah. the card draw, you don't have a lot of answers for a lot of things, yeah. whereas yeah, most right. decks have the consistency in card yeah. draw. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, still does really powerful things, though, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then we have um, Sculpting Steel. I like this card a lot. I like how it's any artifact in play, so you yes. can copy one of yours or someone else's. It, it's it's really just cool artifacts. a great utility card. Yeah. Um, make it a copy of a Dark Steel Colossus. Make it a, anything that's not legendary, yeah. basically. You go make it basically. a copy of an artifact. You make it a copy of a sword. Make it a copy anything. of... Um, anything. Anything that's fun. Yeah. Um, I don't think I need to explain Soul Ring. No, I think just it's soul it's soul ring. It's EDH. It's great because soul ring. It's yes. just useful. That's it. We have staff of domination. So this card is technically part of a three card combo in the deck. Well, three to have the main cards, then you need two cards in your hands. We'll really, a five. Talk card. about that a little yes. bit though. Yes, but yeah. um, this is great. It's got a lot of abilities on it. Um, Very versatile. And all are pretty much relevant. Um, yeah. That five and tap for card draw is just really absolutely great. Yeah, it's really important. Um, I like the fact that this card is so versatile. You can do a lot of different things with it, which I think mm -hmm. is really awesome. Um, having options in Magic is one of the best things that you can do in the game. So I like that a lot. 
Uh, cool. Then we have uh, one of my favorite cards, which I really like. It's uh, very underrated, in my opinion, I think, because people look at the six mana and they get really intimidated, but Staff of Nin. I really mm -hmm. like this card a lot. Again, with this deck, card draw, anything that draws you cards is super, super hel yeah. helpful. Um, and you get to ping stuff. And you get to do something damage. They yeah. increase one one. Nope, you don't get the one one. Or oh, hey, look, I'm gonna do one more damage to you. It's, Basically, it's, it's great. And you can untap this with a couple of things in the deck. Yep. So I think that's really cool if you don't have anything get anything to do. With or mana. it's a six six creature with Karn, which yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I like this. I like having it a lot. Yeah. So next we have the five the swords. swords. Um, so each sword gives protection from two colors and gives the creature plus two plus. They're two. all really good. Um, so the first sword we have here is Body and Mind, which is protection from green and blue. Um, the green, uh, when you do combat damage to, and they're all when you do combat damage to a player, two things happen. Um, you get a, with, uh, Body and Mind, you get a 2-2 two, two green beast. Wolf. Uh, wolf. Yeah. Wolf, not beast, sorry. And then you get a creature back from your graveyard to your hand. No, this is the mill one. They oh, no, this ten. is the opponent mill's yeah, ten they're all, I always forget what they do. There's the five time. of them and yeah. there's ten different abilities, so. It's hard to um, <laughs> So yeah, they mill 10 and you get a 2-2 wolf. That's just great value. Yeah, seems good. Uh, cool. Then we have uh, Feast and Famine. Pro black and green. Yep. And this one, you untap it's all of your lands. Amazing. Which is great. Yeah. And then um, deals combat Come damage to player. Discards a card. Yeah, and they discard not a card. Not that relevant, eh, but untapping all the lands it, you control. Untapping all your lands in the middle of combat is actually a lot of fun. It'd be even better if I had a lot of instant and sorceries in the deck, but this is a colorless deck. I don't get those. Yeah, exactly. But, um, still, the fact that you can untap all ends you control, and yes. you just can do more things with your mana. Yeah, so you main phase, play a bunch of things, swing, do more things second main phase. Yeah, seems good. Uh, then we have the most expensive, which is uh, Fire and Ice, which is um, pro red This blue. is probably the best sword in existence. It's um, the most expensive, so it makes sense. So you get pro red and blue, which are two of the most powerful colors in Magic. Um, yeah, which is arguably, yeah. Great on its own. No removal can target you. No red damage spells can target the creature, which is super, super great. Then you can do two damage to target creature or player. So you can do an additional two damage to that person or kill a creature they have that's small. And then, even better, you get to draw a card. Yeah, super good. You have the thing double strike, you now get four damage and two cards. So it's yeah. it's just absolutely great. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Then we have uh, Light and Shadow. I like this one a lot as well because it's pro white and black, which is good because black's got a lot of really awesome removal. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get to gain three life, and then you can return up to one target creature from your graveyard to your hand, which is awesome. Yes. Uh, yes. Getting things out of your graveyard in this deck is a little bit difficult, and this is a great way yes. to do it. If someone kills your thing, you don't have a lot of ways to get that back, but you can yep. with the sword, which is really good. And then we have War and Peace, which is pro red and white. Uh, you deal damage, number of cards in their hand, and, and then, then you, you gain, gain one life for yeah. each card in your hand. Yeah, not amazing in no, this deck. No, it's, it's the final sword. I figured, well, I've got the other four. Might as well have won the yeah. fifth one. Get pro every all colors on a creature. Yeah, seems good. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, then we have Thran Dynamo. Man, I giant I Manorok. I explain it, but that, it's that's, really good. It's just a Manorok. Yeah. Then we have Unwinding Clock. This is one of my favorite Amazing. cards. Um, it's so good. Because it's, again, a mostly artifact deck. I do things on my turn, tap all my stuff, beginning of the next person, to all my stuff untaps. Yeah. Um, um, this is really, really great with Mycosynth Lattice because all my lands just untapped Yeah. as well. And yeah. so I just kind of go, I'm going to go do things. It's so good because you just, with your artifact creatures, you just don't really have any consequences to not swinging at that point because yep. you swing and then you can have blockers. Yep. It's really good. And the last uh, artifact that we have is um, Voltaic Key. This is just really good. one, an untap an artifact. This is so you can activate enough, any, no, any of the artifacts a second time. It's only one mana to do it. Um, there's another creature in the deck that does basically the same thing for two mana. Um, except that, that one might just be target artifact creature. Um, yeah, but think, it's, yeah. it, it's great nonetheless. Yeah, I like it. Cool. So the deck runs two Planeswalkers. It first runs other Karn, Karn Liberated. Yes. Um, so this has three abilities. He comes in at six, which is a lot for a Planeswalker. Um, his plus four is target player exiles a card from his or her hand, which is okay, but you get four loyalty counters, so it's not bad. Minus three, exile target permanent. That's super, super relevant because yeah. there's not a lot of removal kit in colorless. Yeah. Um, there's basically three cards in this deck that are straight up removal, maybe four if you count ETB effects. Um, so that's super relevant, and you can do that twice before you run out of loyalty, 
and then his ultimate for Neg 14, restart the game, putting into play on the battlefield in your control all cards exiled with Karn. So basically it goes, you exile big things they control, get him up to 14 by protecting him with your other big colorless creatures, restart the game, and they scoop. Is basically what happens, because they have one mana on their turn, if that, and you have a field of big things. I'm pretty sure it's been talked about that Net Karn and Jace the Mind Sculptor, I think, have two arguably the best um, ultimates. ultimates yes. And how, like, they're the most game-changing, devastating oh, ultimates. I feel like Karn's um, thing is significantly better 1v1 than multiplayer. Um, The only reason I'd say that is because it'd be much harder to get it off multiplayer, because you have so... If you get that yeah. even close to 14 counters, everybody's just going to go swing straight at Karn. Basically, yeah. Because you cannot let that go off. But even if you just use it for the exile target permanent, it's really, really oh, good. Yes. Um, it's anything on the board yep. that's threatening. So uh, that'll get rid of everything, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we get to one of the best cards in the entire deck, which is Ugin. I, this is the reason I built the deck, was because of his minus X, which is exile, or each, uh, exile each permanent on the battlefield with converted mana cost X or less that is one or more colors. So, it hits nothing in this deck. He comes in for 7, you neg 7 when he enters, you just exile basically every single permanent on the board that's on land, and you lost nothing. Yeah, and then it's lightning bolt on a stick with this plus 2, which yeah. is really good. And then the minus 10 is, you gain really 7 good. life, draw 7 cards, you may put any of those 7 cards onto the battlefield. Oh no, you may put... Then put... Seven cards into you from your hand. So yeah, you get seven there. cards plus whatever in your hand, and you can put any of those onto the battlefield. It's really good, and really it's good. card draw. It's just yes. results really good, yeah. But most of the time with Ugin, you pretty much just neg X. Yeah, he's mostly a removal he's a, he's a field wipe. I mean, pretty much the deck That doesn't, doesn't really touch have. you, which is the really greatest good. thing in the world. Yeah. And they have a giant field, and you go, nope, now I only have a giant field. Speaking of field wipes, yes. I want to talk about all this dust. This is yeah. another really great card, and this is an Eldrazi-type spell, so... Th any lands that say Aldrazi oh, spells cost two less to cast, hey look, um, I yeah. have Ugin, um, this is great, so it costs five. Exa each player sacrifices, sacrifices all colored permanents. Sacrifices, super important, gets yep. by indestructible, yep. um, gets by hexproof, yep. which is really, really good. It, it's, it's great. Yeah, definitely. Um, I like this card. Yeah, me too. 